because they had the base that agitated community, so I didn't want them to go. And it was also threatened with gun violence, right? Uh, but yet, if you look at her, um, she was just alone, and she still fought and pressed through her, to reach her educational goals. So I looked at this, and then I look at where I am today, and look at the clarion call that I'm calling, I kind of understood that there's always people, a good force, and a team that will always come together and fight for what is right. Which led me to the next visual. Is that it? Actually, that's out of the screen. There's a green X in the top right there. You want to close out of that? There we go. Yes. <laughs> so it led me to old Ruby Bridges, right? And in, in 1960, you know, uh, she was escorted to school by the U.S. Marshals. Um, so she was escorted to uh, from the U.S. to school from the U.S. Marshals, in spite of the negative narratives, assuming um, to control uh, another's environment. So it doesn't matter what was going on. We still had good people in place to make sure that we protect what our students deserve. So now. How do we learn from what the past had taught us? Do we need national guards or US marshals to barricade or escort our students? Or can we together as just plain old citizens, city officials, school leaders, community leaders, parents, and yes, youth leaders, humbly walk aside all of our students to prepare for their so that they can prepare for their future and deposit into our society positivity and soundness. As Dobbin school leader, we do have a plan. And I would like to communicate that plan to you briefly tonight. I need to get up again. Okay. Uh, okay, very good. All right. So briefly. We do understand that SEPTA, you know, the school district of Philadelphia, partnered with SEPTA, and we have charter buses outside. We start at 7.30 in the morning. Some of our students take three buses, two buses. We have 33 as well as the 54 that runs here. They come from the um, L. They come from the, you know, the uh, subway, the train. Either way, but guess what? We have charter buses designed right for students, only for students to jump on. Uh, we have, um, no, I, I skipped one. You have the right side. Yeah. All the way to the right. All the way to the right. Okay, here we go. All right. Um, we ask them to refrain from congregating outside. We have a corner store. We have our staff sometimes they like to sit in front of. We have McDonald's across the street. Our plan is to not to have them do it. You know, we open up at 6 a.m. in the morning. We have students who arrive 6 a.m. 8, 8, 8, 8, 6 a.m. in the morning. They do not have to sit outside. I am here. We are here. The building is open. So even if you think that they're traveling and it is in the middle of the night or early dawn of the day, we're here, right? We're here. We serve as breakfast and everything else, but they have to stick to the schedule. Uh, we ask that they consider leaving weapons at home or surrender the, into that amnesty box. Here we have our climate manager. Yep, she's right there. She's educated, trained. We have our assistant principal here. We have a whole staff here who loves our kids. But guess what? We are an educational institution. We teach them other ways to resolve and restore the, their practices. So we ask them that this is not a war zone. So, you know, I understand that some may want to have many says they travel or 
knobs as they travel because they are afraid of the community. I am going to ask, I am going to discourage that. I am going to say that because where they going and trying to prepare for a full learning day, it has nothing to do with those weapons. And, I, you know, I just don't want to encourage that. Uh, they also, every student will have a bell schedule. Every student has a class to attend, right? So if they are where they're supposed to be, it's easier for me because we have systems in place, right? We have lockdown. We have, you know, no, seriously, because we do understand what is going on out there. But if I know or we know where every child is, I am guaranteed that we have reduced the risk of your child getting harmed. So I'm asking that your child will, or students, that you will adhere to your roster. I'm also asking to refrain from leaving the building early. During lunchtime, oh, there's McDonald's out there, we're going to go to McDonald's. You know, now the virtual center got DoorDash. I'm going to hire DoorDash to come to the door. You know, um, I'm, you know, I'm tired today, so I'm going to leave school early. That could put our students at risk to be harmed within the community. We're talking about safe travel to school. And once they get to school, it is our responsibility. But again, this is a, a, a meeting where we're talking about our, our plan. We're devising our plan so that we can make sure we can reduce the risk of our students being coming victim of gun violence. And it's just very real. Uh, we ask them for uh, refrain from inviting non diverse students inside the school. Uh, without following the building entry procedures, like uh, intruders. So we have a lot of friends that have, oh, they go to Dobbins, and I want to visit Dobbins for the day, even though they're not Dobbins students, and we have them just go sneak in from another door. You know, we can't lock the door because that's a fire hazard, right? And we have plenty of uh, doors around here. But however, you may know that one person, but it doesn't mean that someone else doesn't know that person, right? Or some way some conflict can happen, and then that can also be a potential brooding, brewing ground for, um, you know, just not doing things uh, in the right way or, you know, provoking some sort of gun violence. So what I'm asking for uh, parents, I think I kind of needed to refresh this. So when I'm at, can you help me uh, keep this? Thank you. I'm sorry, take it up. Is the Wi-Fi kind of delayed? I'm oh, so sorry. All right, here we go. See, uh, it was updated. <laughs> so yeah, so this is our plan. So we had the code of conduct. We talked about that, right? About how we don't want students to go from outside. Uh, you know, without being um, without uh, being dismissed properly, without um, just you know intruders and so have you. We have administrators, SSOs, which is our school safety officer and our police department. We have us because every day we go out for dismissal. We just don't send the kids out at two thirty four. Uh, our school safety officer will go out and surveillance the area first. They take the temperature of what the community is going for. Is it any cop cars going? Is it any fire trucks going? Is it any drugs or paraphernalia around the building that would be, um, you know, unsafe for our students? And then we will sit there and say, okay, we can move forward with the missile. Myself, uh, Mr. Douglas, our assistant principal, uh, Ms. Russell, our climate manager, we all out there, we do not leave from outside until every student get on the bus. Either they're 33 or they're 54. And we ask those who are staying after school for after school uh, clubs and activities, we ask them to remain inside. You know, if they, got, if they feel like they want to go to McDonald's and anything else, we say, let's wait till all of the traffic clears 
and then we can sit there and move, you know, like die down, then we can move forward. So that is our plan. Um, and we also schedule parent workshops to assist with students achievement. So sometimes it seems as if, you know, parents don't know what it is that, what, what can I do, right? So we ask that you continue to talk to students about their safety. We have to realize what day and time that we're living in. It's easier to pass them over a weapon, but it's another thing to sit down and give them things to think about and how to really avoid or be proactive with the situation. Nope. <laughs> so there we go. So yeah, so now it's just a real plain and simple parent students, what shall we do? Uh follow set the charters, right? Bus schedule. Charter bus schedules are there. Even if it's 5.30 in the morning, those bus attendants or drivers are expecting you, right? They're expecting you. And at that time, they know that their bus should definitely be mostly filled with students, all right? So please make sure you follow it. Even after school, there's charter buses. When you come out, it's like two or three of them lined up. So you jump right on that bus. <laughs> you jump right on that bus and you go to your designated area, whether it's work, home or pick up your siblings or whatever it may be, you already communicated that plan with your parents. You must stay in communication and you must follow that schedule. Uh, refrain from congregating at outside. I keep telling you that because guess what? That's when the commotion happens. That's when you have multiple people or bystanders get shot because they just idle and they just lingering around. You have somewhere to go, home. And if you're coming, you are welcome in because my doors are open at 6 a.m. So there's no reason to be hanging around. And we serve breakfast, right? So, you, you know, you can definitely come on in. Please leave your weapons at home. This is an educational institution. Our job is to prepare you for college and career. Not jail. Not just to be on the street and had no vision and had no hope. We are people that have something to offer and we have different kinds of tools to give you. All right, so we do have amnesty box and we ask the parents not to encourage that. Um, adhere to your class schedule, I'm gonna say it again. You have a place, a designated place and time to be. I need to know, we need to know where you at at all times because if something is happening in the community, and we are here safe, and you know, we're trying to lock down the place so no one in the community can get in the building. I am responsible for 1,340 students. So if you're somewhere at McDonald's and you don't supposed to be there, and I'm locking my door, you're locked out. And if you're from West Philly and North Philly and you went to McDonald's, and you know, and it wasn't the time to be dismissed, where are you going to go? And you don't know the day or the hour when it's going to happen. But I guarantee you, as I'm devising my plan now, we have a plan. If anything goes wrong inside of Dobbins, outside of Dobbins, even if something was going on inside of Dobbins, we have a lock-in in place. We, we have those drills. Everybody sees them. Every company, every business has those drills. It's the world we're living in today. And we just want to have to be knowledgeable about it and action turn that into action. Um, we also refrain from inviting intruders in. We have ongoing conversation about safety at home. Remember, it's not about passing over a weapon. It's not mace. It's not knives. Because the next question is, are they prepared to use it? Are they prepared to harm someone? Right? And then are they prepared to suffer the consequences from it? Are you prepared to suffer the consequences from it? No, because most of the time, if you come to school, you're not a criminal. Your mindset is different. Let me build your mindset as something positive where you can go. It's not drugs to sit there or weed or whatever. We're not that type of place. And we want to be a safe haven for you somewhere at home, like away from home, right? <laughs> and you have a community here 
that will love and support you and begin to develop you from where you are. And I definitely want to um, encourage parents to come to our workshops. We, we partner with our school district. We have face liaisons that always do. We have computer labs, you know. We have job sites. We have all that goes on. We are our hub here. We have our community um, coordinator here. We always have resources. You come for um, report card night, you will see resources that the city offer. We do not just, you know, focus on one area. It's holistically. And, you know, a good friend I just called, and uh, Mr. Murphy, he reminded me, yes, it takes a village to raise children. Our key, our key thing is to raise the children. We want to raise the children. And if we need to be visible to raise the children, and that's all that we are going to do. I know I'm taking up a lot of time. So my final thing is, if we walk away, the two key actions is to be obedient and let's be a partner. There's rules, there's, there's you know, student conduct. I'm going to ask you to be where you're supposed to be. Be on that bus, use the charters, use the systems that we have. Be obedient. And together, we can reduce the risk of our students being becoming a victim of gun violence as they travel to and from Dobbins. Because they have so much here, I'm telling you, so much here, not just a diploma, they, you know, they have options to do career as well as getting a college education, as well as becoming an entrepreneur, as well as becoming a, 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 a contributing citizen. They start volunteering, they get internships, they win scholarships, they win prizes, they have fun, they develop their talent here. It's not virtual. It's not virtual. Because remember, if you keep it virtual, it's just going to be you and your child alone. But if you have us in the school together, look at us. You have everyone here to raise your child. You have everyone here to build up a community. And remember, it's not just about today. We're talking about tomorrow. So again, what the has the past taught us? That we just need to be visible and we need to stand strong and walk alongside our students regardless of what the community is saying. Whatever the community is doing is not that. It's about where we're going and what we're trying to come out of. All right? So today we have more people. <laughs> and uh, again, so Charles, you would like to introduce him. Yes. Good afternoon, Thank you. everyone. Forgive me for inspiring. Uh, my name is Charles Rez. I'm the community school coordinator here from the mayor's office of Children's and Families. I'm also an alumni here from class 1993. I'm not sure if our newly appointed principal, uh, Siobhan Thompson Message, he's also an alumni as well. Um, and so what we have here, we have a, a panel that we have uh, comprised of members of city council, mem members of the Philip Police Force, members of the school district. And the idea is Principal Thompson really just wanted to invite the principals, I'm sorry, invite the parents, the students, and members of the community to really hear what her plan is, to hear a safe educational environment. So at this moment, what we will have is somewhat of a panel discussion, uh, a few moments of quick Q&A, we want to be respectful of everyone's time, and really just the concerns of parents. I know we have some incoming ninth graders. I met a young man uh, a few moments ago in his family. They'll be coming in from ninth grade. So I know that there's concerns, not only just in that having a safe corridor for uh, your scholar, but also to know what is the exact plan. Uh, what will take place in the event of uh, unfortunate uh, emergency? And what better place to hear it but from the principal herself? And this is this is the theme. This is the theme that's going to be created for Dobbins, for the atmosphere of Dobbins. Let me know that there's a holistic approach. There has always been a holistic approach, but as the community coordinator, it is my job to bring forth major stakeholders, as you see here. Because if you have a question, the questions are designed to be answered. And so when you ask the questions, you, you're saying that I'm willing to be held accountable. And so what better time, a month or two before we actually return to school, to raise some questions, receive some answers, and then uh, uh, devise some action um, steps. So at this moment, uh, we'd like to open it up for Q&A. 
But also, I would like for our panelists to introduce themselves, and if you have a few uh, words to say before the Q&A. Well, just, so good evening, everyone. My, my name is uh, Kevin Bethel. I'm the Chief of School Safety. In my former position, I was Deputy Commissioner for the Police Department ran operations for the city under Commissioner Ramsey. So, first is the, the principal, she laid it all out. <laughs> she laid it all out. Um, you know, our goal, and Dr. Heider's tasked me when I took over off to school safety two years ago, is to really help support creating a safe environment for our children, our employees, the entire environment. And so there's a lot of collaboration. We'll talk about that tonight if it comes up, of us working together to make sure we create a safe environment for our kids, not just out in the community, but in our school setting as well. And so I'll be prepared to answer those questions. Uh, if I can, I'll follow up with you. Uh, but I appreciate the opportunity to be here and it's a great turnout. You should be very proud of, of all of you for being here. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Anthony Murphy. <laughs> I pick my own pick of people I like. He's a great man. <laughs> I'm the executive director of Talent Integrated Services. Uh, we're here, one, as partners with the school as well as with school safety. In the Philadelphia Police Department, we develop safe cars, but we also provide a service of dealing with mentoring and also dealing with mediation along with uh, Pan, who's in, in the back there, Michael Harris, and we do mediations. And so let me say briefly, part of the safety plan has to be the role that the adults play and the role that the children play. You see, the police and school can have all the plans in the world, but we don't know what's going on with you or what's going on in your world. So we need that level of communication. We need parents to be willing to participate. If there's things happening on Facebook, I don't care how good we are, we won't know. If there's things happening on Instagram that impact you, we won't know. If you're willing to share with us so that we can also build out a plan to make us more inclusive as to the actual route that you travel, the actual buses that you take, not just getting you on the bus here and you off the bus here, but getting you on the bus where you begin. Because safety doesn't just begin here, it begins at home. It takes a village to raise a child. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Helen Gim. I'm a city council member uh, that represents the whole city of Philadelphia, but I have a special love in my heart for Dobbins, um, for your young people. I'm the chair of the Committee on Children and Youth, and I'm also here to celebrate um, uh, Principal Thompson's um, first year formally as, as principal of Dobbins uh, School. And I especially want to welcome all the parents who are out here today, community members, and most of all, the young people themselves. It is so great to see you out today because I want to tell you that myself, the city of Philadelphia, the school district, and this school is so excited for you to come back in September. All of our world is built around yours. It's making this school the best opportunity that you can possibly have and that it meets your expectations, especially after such a difficult year. Um, one of the first things I wanted to talk about, though, when we talk most importantly about safety and the care and keeping of our young people, especially in these uh, particular times, young people are safest when their needs are met. That is one of the things that we know. Young people are safest when their needs are met. It's not just about putting up walls um, around everybody and trying to lock out the outside world. We have got to be a partnership to take care of our young people's mental health needs, to make sure that their academic needs are, are met and supported, that there are counselors and supporters. And so if there is one thing that I am particularly geared for, it is absolutely making sure that you have multiple uh, options at your disposal if you feel like you need help. If you can't get your needs met at the city level, then please call city council. Call my office, call your district council member, call whomever it is that you need, because we are geared to make sure that every young person starts school successfully, is safe in school, and that this is actually a joyful experience. Um, many of us worked for many years to bring you to Dobbins School, um, because when I first came in in 2016, I walked through the halls. They were dark. Um, the school had not been fully renovated at the time. Um, and, you know, there is millions of dollars poured into this building to make it bright, 
to make it welcoming, to show you state-of-the-art CTE classes. It is incredibly exciting because you will see tremendous opportunities here. This is not just a pathway um, to becoming the next you know, Nobel physicist or a mathematician or the next author, poet in residence um, or historian. It's also a place where you can learn crafts that make you relevant to friends, family, um, that, that, that give you so much opportunity um, and I, I hope you feel like that from the moment you walk through these brightly lit corridors to this beautiful IMC room um, to other parts of it. I also want you to know that Dobbins is home to local heroes, Charles Reyes, to your entire uh, school staff um, who are here. Um, there are heroes who have been working throughout the pandemic to make sure that children and families have their needs cared for. Um, and the last thing I'll say is that my outreach director is here, Andre Celine in the back. Um, we do a tremendous amount of work keeping people housed. Um, we've helped distribute 60 uh, to $100 million in rent assistance uh, to families if you're struggling to pay rent, if you're worried about any kind of eviction or legal notification, um, we're here to help. And there's lots of resources that are available for, for parents and families. So we'll be sticking around afterwards for any individual one-on-one -on -one questions. But welcome to the start of a wonderful school year. Um, we're here to keep your children safe, happy, full of opportunity, and educated. Thank you. So I have to follow all of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good evening. My name is Hugh Douglas, assistant principal here, proud assistant principal here. Um, our role responsibility will be to work with Principal Thompson in terms of our vision and mission, ensuring that all of our students are successful. We give as many supports to our parents because our parents are successful in whatever they choose or are doing, our students are successful. That's one less thing on their plate and more things that our students can do with all to our work. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Mike Thompson. I'm the Director of Community Engagement Liaison at the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office on behalf of our office, DA Larry Krasner and my supervisor, Dee Lamar Stewart. Hello, peace and blessings. As we're still in the midst of a pandemic, we hope that you're safe, um, that your families are safe. Um, looking forward to the discussion tonight. In short, my job as a community liaison is to build relationships with residents and stakeholders throughout the city, to know what your needs, wants, and interests are within your communities, and to build a pipeline of communication between the community and our office so that those needs, wants, and interests are being met and advocated for. Um, our office is obviously uh, the prosecutorial office for the city of Philadelphia, but we recognize that if we're really going to be able to address the root of public safety issues, we must do more than simply prosecute. Um, and so I'm looking forward to the town discussion to share more about our collaborative efforts um, with many of the folks that are here um, and many others, as well as residents and stakeholders, much like yourselves, to include our young people. I've had the privilege of working with students here at Dobbins um, throughout the school year. Um, and we're looking forward to continuing partnering with young people because we recognize young people are our most important stakeholders in this city. Um, so thank you very much, and I'll pass it off to Frank. Oh, my, my apologies. <laughs> Um, good, good evening, everyone. My name is Leo Russell. I am the climate manager here. My job here is not only to keep the students safe, but it's also to help us get this, through this thing called life. I'm literally here to say, okay, listen, this is the culture, this is the climate of our building, this is what we do, this is how we act, and this, these are some of the things we may need, not only we, as in us here in the building, and the student, but the families as well, so that our children are successful in life. That is me. <laughs> uh, good evening. My name is uh, Jason Tricoli. I'm a sergeant over the 22nd district. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, my captain, uh, Captain Akil, who knows the principal well. Uh, he's on a uh, summer vacation. Uh, basically, just um, briefly, it's just that the uh, some of the programs that are working on with the police department and the school are um, we're working on a program where we can uh, attempt to have. Um, uh, radio transmission to speed up um, to speed up on response times with radio transmission with the school police so uh, us working along with the school police as well as having school um, Philadelphia police officers is going to be uh, specifically assigned to this school 
for dismissal purposes. Um, they'll be out there during the dismissal to ensure, you know, to assist in the safety, uh, to ensure they get on the buses, to, uh, you know, patrol the perimeter of the school as well. And they will also be here daily. I mean, and typically they will, a little bit more of community-based uh, policing, that they'll be um, a little bit more uh, familiar with the students and, and, you know, so that it's easier to speak to. You know, some of the students get to know the police officers as well, kind of old school policing, similar to like a uh, footbeat type thing where there's more community-based policing. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Curtis Wilkerson, Director of Constituent Services for Council President Darrell Clark. Uh, the Council President sends his regards. Uh, my job, in short, is to report all your needs and concerns back to him today um, and to work with these great partners to make sure that those things get executed. So, uh, as you see, we have a, a host of uh, great panelists. Um, a variety of individuals from different departments in the city, and they will be able to answer uh, some questions, um, follow follow through. And um, the hope is that this is just uh, this isn't a start of a new relationship with everyone you see here. This is just a continuation uh, as we continue to navigate through uh, this pandemic. Um, every department that you see here has uh, been. Uh, in tune with Dobbins, has been um, in partnership with Dobbins and continue to support Dobbins. And uh, one of the things that uh, I would like to really just get right down into it, uh, yeah, um, you, there's the relationship with the 22nd Street, uh, the 22nd District. And we have we have an alumni uh, that's years into this, uh, this, the, the police district um, the department, several alumni, and also the captain of uh, the 22nd Street District, uh, Captain uh, Akil. And so I would just really like to maybe perhaps start that discussion wrapped around that communication. Um, traditionally, and traditionally this has been the, the traditional photo, protocol depending on emergencies to communicate with uh, our police district if it's necessary. Uh, one of the conversations that came out of our meeting just a week ago, and you heard it was mentioned, uh, to focus on a better communication that's not necessarily traditional. And that's uh, to really focus on having a direct communication with the assigned officers by ways of two-way radio, correct? And so um, the discussion has started with identifying funds to actually just uh, purchase two radios, two two-way radios, and that discussion is underway. And I think that that's a, I, I believe that will be groundbreaking. And so I just want to uh, leave with that um, to, to kind of give the parents an idea how serious this plan is. This isn't just to come together and let's give you the traditional protocol steps. This is groundbreaking. This is different. This is new. I believe that the district, like you said, actually has a partnership like that with Tim. Yes. And uh, certain hours throughout the day that they actually come alongside and support Tim as well. So just imagine. Uh, to have that type of direct contact with identified officers that's in the immediate grid. So it's not necessarily, they won't be like at broad in the area, just a few blocks away. But to have that uh, communication with them, I think is ideal. So I would like to start that discussion off of that when you talk about safety and concerns that some parents have. That's one really quickly, just from a communication perspective. Uh, the way we have it set up now, we have school officers in, in most of our school, all of our high schools are covered with school safety officers. I know my sergeant is police officers, they're not police officers, they're security officers, school safety officers in schools. We have a dispatch center, so my school safety officers have an immediate dispatch to the Philadelphia Police Department. We have alignment with the Philadelphia Police Department, so we have radios that enable us to immediately reach out to the team in, in the field. Now, that being said, if you're trying to do another enhancement of that SARS as it relates to some two-way radios, I think my office can support that. You have to try to pilot around that. So if you're looking for that, I guess I'm on TV, right? I can say it right. That's right. I mean, I'm only thinking about, about, about three radios, right? Three or four radios for your yes. men and women. If they want to, you want to try a more direct pilot, we can support that. I mean, I think any of that enhanced communication we do have a very robust communication network now. You know, all of our school safety officers have 
radios that can dispatch us with the Fulton Police Department. They can go over to their main band if there's an emergency situation. They also can call into their dispatch. And we call directly into the police dispatch, whether that be fire, rescue, or policing. And so we do have a strong mechanism, but any enhancement of that communication, I, we're 100% supportive of that. And we can get you, we can support you and get you the radios to do that. I'll take the first question. Okay, okay. Uh, my name is Sunday Harrison. I am an alumni of Dobbins. And I'm also a parent of Dobbins. I'm Dobbins of uh, parents president as well. And I'm the school with changing it over to the new parent that's coming in. If um if someone on the panel can just explain to the parents what community looks like in partnership with the students. When we send our children to school and you talk about having more community, knowing kids by name. What does the plan look like for you to know our kids by name in this neighborhood, this school, and to really connect with them? Okay, that was the community. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so awesome. I'll just start off with it, right? Uh, what I'm hearing that you're asking is what does the community and the, what does the relationship between the community and the students look like? And the police. And, oh, and the police. And the police. Okay. Because I think that, I think what you guys said was the police were going to do old time policing. Back in the day, old time policing, I knew officer, when he walked up to me, I knew his name. So how is the, 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 the 22nd district going to ensure the parents that that's what they want to do, which is so I'm going to tell you how I would like to direct it, right? So we have two police officers that will be assigned or is assigned to dogs. And like I said, it would be like a community sort of thing. So I just don't want police sitting outside as if they're patrolling or just barricading us. You know, just like it's still a divide between them. So what the two police officers usually do, they come in. You know, and then they also walk around, they visit the programs, uh, they will uh, go to the lunchroom, eat lunch with them. If it's a time where it's restorative practices or mentoring that needs to be done, then that would be something that they can come in with. I know that they have done fundraisers and uh, given money back so that we can be able to buy uh, incentives, you know, and then we'll let them know, like, this actually came from... You know, the two police gentlemen is there. So what they is, they have been becoming as members of our family. We have a, a climate and a culture that is not just, you know, students. We call us a Mustangs, and we are Mustang family, you, you know, and that's the way that we are. And it doesn't mean if you're a student, if you're a teacher, if you're a newly appointed teacher, you became a part of the Mustang family. And that is the, that is the climate and the culture that we have. So... Just to close up on her question is just that I'm not having, I remember our goal is definitely to raise the children. And you raise children by having relationships. It has to come through relationships. I don't let a tutor in if they cannot build a relationship. I don't appoint a teacher if you cannot build a relationship. They are still human beings and they have a lot of decisions that is attacking them. They at an age point where they are trying to develop and learn their identity. It's a very critical time that we must protect. So no, I'm not looking just for titles. I, I'm not here just for a title. I'm here because I'm a parent as well. And I need relationships and I need that village. Right, Ms. Murphy, I need that village. So that is what we're trying to do. So I let um, I kind of this time. Also, um, so for everyone, so you know, that's one of our standards, that's one of our goals, that's put in our plan, relationships first. Every teacher, relationships first. The first month of school, not the first week, not the first two weeks, the first month of school, we are focused on relationships. Who are you? What is your name? Where do you come from? Who's your mother? Who's your father? Who do you live with? What do you like to do? We are here to connect, not only with the students, but to with the families and everyone who takes part in building that student, building that child. To add to all the work you said, also to try to engage the community around the school and getting them engaged and having them support 
the school as well as the students. Because safety is holistic. It's, it's a holistic thrust. It's not one side versus the other, but it's holistic. This is why when you say it takes a village to raise a child, it means that everyone in the village, no matter how far away you are or how near you are, you count, you're relevant. So part of what we will also do is, as partners is try to make sure that the community is engaged in supporting that. Okay, and for the record, I'm going to number that too. Yes, if I could. Um, well, one thing, thank you, Ms. Patterson. Thank you for all the work that you do as a parent leader here uh, at this school and just supporting young people, knowing what a difference it makes to have so many parents be here, like everybody um, who's here today. But I also want to emphasize how important it is for us to make sure that there are eyes and ears on street corners and on neighborhood blocks and so forth, you know, for the businesses that are in the neighborhood, you know, as our young people come out of school, it's important that there's a relationship and open communication with them. And um, I'm, I'm, I am putting something out that I don't think we've ever really done super well, which is that Dobbins is a citywide attraction. Kids come here from all over the city of Philadelphia to attend a, a, a top notch, a uh, unique uh, school that provides you with um, modern CTE uh, education uh, combined with like a good academic learning and caring environment, as well as one of the best community schools that we've got in the city. That being said, though, when we have kids coming from all over the city, I do think that we need a discussion about the SEPTA stops and care and attention for arrival and especially on departure. Um, I, I firmly believe that within the walls of this school, your, your child will be known by name, um, will have their, their family members uh, easily contacted. Um, some of our concerns, though, do happen in terms of safety and coordination um, when we hit the, uh, the departures and when multiple schools converge on different subway stops. So um, if you are at a location, you should please let us know that. Um, because uh, it's not something that the school by themselves can just solve. You can go to the school, but they are one entity. We actually have to coordinate with SEPTA. We do have to coordinate with other schools to know um, if there are any conflicts or other things that are happening. And we do need to coordinate um, broadly with uh, uh, the district police captains, um, with, with uh, Mr. Bethel um, at the School District of Philadelphia. Um, we, we are fully um, committed to the idea that your child is safe from the moment they leave your house until they get to school and when they leave school until they get home. That is supposed to be the commitment that the district provides, but it involves many different people. Sometimes we don't actually know what we don't know. Um, what's, what, what are the hot spots, when? So young people, absolutely, they know. Um, and part of part of what I said was when young people are safest when their needs are met, it's when they trust people enough to tell them, I don't feel safe on this particular ride home at these particular mm -hmm. times because. Um, and then we can try to get things into motion as fast as we can. But that would be one thing that I would ask um, that all of us can do um, better on and something that I'm, um, I'm focused on because it's an area that I've traditionally seen problems happen. Two, I mean veggie bag, because I don't piggyback though. A veggie bag. <laughs> okay, a veggie bag. When you look at 1,342, there's data that we have that can address some of the concerns yes. that she just raised. Mm -hmm. We can know where you're coming from. And that means it tells us what particular sector route you should be using. Mm -hmm. We will know what bus stop you should be using. We categorically know just on the data that we have from previous years what subway stops or what L stops or what train stops can present a problem. We have an idea of where those hubs are. So it's knowing how many children are going to be traveling to utilize that space in order to do what the councilwoman has put forward to have that type of coordination with SEPTA, with Philly Police, and with you. 
See, it's not accepted and fully police without you. It, 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 it starts with you. Because it starts not only with what your children know that we don't know, but it starts with what you say to your children and sending them to school and how they carry themselves and the information that they provide. So in order to build that coordination, one of the things we'll have to have that we can get from you, well, him, <laughs> is that data on your children. Because that becomes critical to do what she said. He's my daddy guy, right? <laughs> I, just want, I just want all of you to know there is a large collaboration. I mean, the, the let out the Carters after school are our, our biggest challenges. There is a significant collaboration between the Philadelphia Police Department, SEPTA Police, and, 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 and my office, and Pan. My, I mean, where we, we talk with Mike Harris, and they do some of the Carter when we're having issues, twists, and it was Anthony Murphy. When, so there is a strong collaboration. We just reinstituted every, every month now, we have. We'll be having divisional meetings where we take everyone in the geographical area, the principals, climate staff, all of the staff, to have those more detailed conversations about what are those issues so we can get ahead of some of the things that are happening. Uh, but they, they let out with the times when the kids converge into our hubs, our transit hubs, or the Aldi, or the big hubs, is what we often figure we, we find many of our challenges. So what Anthony says, it does take a, a strong collaboration. So there is a layer of collaboration amongst the entities. But more importantly, is really, really managing our kids and telling them that they need to get in and get through and get home as we do this portal to portal from the time they leave home and back. I just wanted to emphasize the question earlier too, Ms. Patterson, that my office, the Office of School Safety, is really taking that relationship first process as well. We're training all of our men and women around mentoring. We're going to be in the schools doing a lot of restorative work, restorative circles. And when you look at the Philadelphia Police Department, we have to give them a great applause. We started a program in 2014 that continues today where these men and women come in and they divert. 90% of our kids, 95% of our kids will be diverted from arrest or offenses that are happening in the school. When they go into a program sponsored by the Department of Human Services, they do not get arrested. They stay at the school. They're released at the school and DHS and through their partnership with their IPS services, with Commissioner Ali and DHS work with those young people without bringing So kids who come to school with weapons, as long as there's not a gun, are all being diverted into a program. And so we're doing a lot of work on the front end to really lower the temperature to help build those relationships. So an officer who comes in and doesn't arrest, but gets moves a young person into a program, is going to be seen much different by the men, men and women in the community, in particular those parents. When you get a call and say, your kid's not arrested, no record, Ms. Patterson, we're going to put him, get him and her some help. In some cases, it's not needed, but it's there and available. I, I like to be there. Yeah. <laughs> I like. I mean, we had. We had, yeah, so, we had a hand. <laughs> so this, you still okay? You said the same. Then Steve. Hey, continue. And then um, President Clark. When we talk about. <clears throat> When we talk about community, um, what I'm hearing is police and school. I'm not hearing recreational programs where the young people go when they leave here. You're assuming they go home. And if they go home, is there anybody at home to get them in the house to do things? When we talk about the violence program, the violence that's going on is happening. Not so school hours, in communities where I So what are we doing to help the community or the large community from school to police? Is cutting that open where they can go and do some things? Is there is another recreation center here? And you got students <coughs> all over the city. Is there places to link them up? There's a third base before you get home. There's children need and young people, even young adults, need to go to if there's no way to at home. We're missing some steps. And I think the other step that we're missing is what the young people want to do to engage their time in school and home that makes it safer for them and things to do. I'm a doctor's alumni. I remember the programs <laughs> that we had at the school for the places we had to go to so that there was not a whole lot of violence. I mean, it was young people doing young people's 
stuff, or we wasn't killing people and doing all that. So people need to take a larger look at what community really is, not just the godless community or the police. What we young people need to go from space to space safely and to be able to grow. Like you said, raise the children. We raise the children that need a financial outlet after they've been here all day, studying, learning, doing something, they need to do something. The after school sports programs, what does that look like for them? Is is it an opportunity for people who aren't in sports to do other things? <coughs> Those are the kinds of things I hear young people say, we don't have nothing to do. We don't have anywhere to go. So I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Okay. So as, as a Dobbs alumni as well, the great thing is that it's a great question, and I'm glad that you asked, because that was going to be a, that's a good segue to the next thing. As a community school coordinator here at Dobbs, is it is my job to recognize on recognize uh, the outside community as well as the inside community. So one of the thing, one of the core purposes of, of being a community school is actually building a bridge from inside out, right? So something that something that uh, I created about five years ago. Uh, for that very purpose, on Saturday mornings, we do something called Get Fit Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And so Get Fit Saturdays, I see you nodding your head, so you must have been a, a proud recipient of Get Fit Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is Get Fit Saturdays, um, it's really just opening the doors, creating a safe place for families. It started out, the, the idea was just really for the children, for the students, children of the community, children throughout the city. And it just grew into something bigger. And you know we have we we have uh, families coming from as close as Sergeant Street, our 63rd and Cedar, 57 and Woodland. They come from all over. From so from nine to one for the last six years, every Saturday morning, I will open up Dobbins and we offer basketball boot camp, Tai Chi, line dancing, Zumba, uh, alternative spin class, uh, first time home buyers uh, programs, babysitting um, certification, and infant CPR and first aid oh certification. <laughs> Coupon class for for the ladies who love the coupon. Okay. Uh, we we will we, <laughs> the list goes on and on. And so um, I'm sponsored and backed by American Heart Association and Health Plan have partner plans. And so what we found was during the pandemic, you know, people still had to live. So we went virtual. We cut it down to an hour and we just identified certain classes those Saturday mornings. We even incorporated uh, a healthy food demonstration, which we do here on Saturday mornings. Also, when you talk about uh, opportunities for young folk after school, we still have 18 sports programs mm -hmm. that our students are uh, eligible for. Uh, we, we have committed coaches and staff uh, from the school and also alumni that come alongside the coaches to actually support those programs. And we also... We also have a brand new weight room. As you can see, our new principal is excited. <laughs> That's the thing, right? Passion. So, but when you talk about the adoption community, we also offer adult uh, educational courses here, up GED classes. We offer. Uh, I partner with uh, Unite Here. <laughs> Unite. You Unite Here. I'm not here. Okay. You right. Partner with Unite Here, which is a culinary union. And we, we're in conjunction with 1199C. So adults and uh, those 18 and older could come alongside in this this uh, this this hub and this process to uh, become certified in culinary uh, and restaurant practices, hospitality. They uh, certify OSHA, uh, not OSHA, um, surf safe, surf safe uh, hospitality management. They go through a vigorous training. They go through this educational component. We're a certified educator. Uh, they go through a training in our state of the art restaurant downstairs, which is a full fledged restaurant kitchen. We have our chef here. Yep. Uh, one of our great chefs. And so this is not just, hey, once you get these certifications, you can look for a job. No, 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 no. We have partnered with Aaron Mark, um, bar assignment through the years, and um, we've been able to uh, have job placement. With the with the convention center, Wells Fargo Center, and Citizen Bikes Park, and bar assignment in the airport. You've also heard our our principal and our great climate manager yes. speak of something called financial wealth building. So uh, about 
five years ago, I partnered with FS Investments. These are all communities. This is a great question. Because I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm yes. excited. Yes. 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 So, yes. so, so we, partnered with, yes. we partnered with FS Investments. They're located down at the old Navy Yard. And so with that partnership, uh, we was able to bring in the uh, University of Pennsylvania with um, the Warden School of Business, where not only did we start financial wealth building, where anyone in the city, anyone in the community could come and learn uh, about you. You have students as well. We could actually get there. We created uh, a pipeline for students. But let me, I'll get to that point. But so it's, it's a program where you come in, learn financial wealth building, financial, financial literacy, uh, how to actually uh, redesign your shopping habits, how to utilize your credit, things of that nature. But what happened, the, the, the core purpose of it is to actually learn the stock market. And so with that partnership, it connected us to Charles Schwab. And so once it began to, we began to expose members of the community of financial literacy, we had a, we have a great parent, uh, uh, president, our parent, our SAC. And so she said, listen, how about we create a Dobbins Investment Group? Ms. Ms. Marie Patterson, class 1995, she spearheaded the Dobbins Investment Group. You can find that, that page on, on Facebook, Dobbins Investment Group. You can come alongside and find out uh, the, the next schedule, things of that nature. Uh, Ms. Marie Patterson, class 1995, she's a much thing spearhead. But that's, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I could go on and on about the opportunities that we present. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you. So I'm telling you. So so when you talk about uh, community, this is one community and climate, I'm gonna bring in community and climate. This is why if you look around, we have uh, Mr. Harris with Ann down at 16 Maria, um, located at uh, uh, Senator Street old office, which was uh, Senator Kitchen old office. Now you guys are in that same location next door. Right next door. Right next door. So Pan is here. We have the district attorney office here, who they've come along through um, Greg Lamar Stewart. They come along over the last four years, where they actually come in this building once a month and do a whole whole uh, uh, workshop with our, with our, our young folk. Yeah. We have. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't. I don't remember the last name. Jones. Jones. Yeah. So uh, Ike Jones had. He came in a few years with Mr. Donnell Drinks, um, started a, a, a program, I Used to Be You. Now Mr. 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 Jones is in Dutch with Pan. As you can see, Mr. Murphy, that was alumni, Mr. 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 Bethel. Um, and so there's a, a host of partnerships that we have, which ties into climate. And so now I will introduce you to, to Ms. Leah Rush. <laughs> So, we also, um, like you said, what do you have for the students? Outside of sports, we have a, ho a host of clubs, we have bowling, we have dance, we have tai chi, okay. we have cooking, anime. we have anime, anime. <laughs> we have GSA. Come on, let me call some more. Drum line. Uh, Drum line, chess, um, theater. Wrestling, theater. We also cheer. Yep, cheer through the school district. They have a um, the school district in a whole has a uh, swimming. That you can be on a swim team. And everyone from all over the school district comes together to do that. Um, we have partnered with not only the mayor's office but also with OST, which is out of school time, and that is also DHS. We do um, an after school program. We have this is our first year. We created something very big called a teen lounge. In that teen lounge, we got a 70 inch TV. We have a uh, uh, ping pong. We got popcorn all machines. Yep, we have popcorn machines, cotton candy, 360 um, games, photo booths, games, all that stuff. So we do a lot of stuff after school with the students too, just to make sure like, hey, okay, maybe your moms are home, right? Maybe you don't want to go home yet. Maybe you just need something to eat. Maybe you just need somewhere to stay. Maybe you just need to hang out. Maybe you just need to get out of your community. Maybe you just need to breathe. Yeah. Maybe you just need to be a kid. Yeah. Maybe you just want to play, yeah. right? Maybe you just want to just sit down and read a book. Yes. We have it. And we do that after school with them as well. I hope that did answer your question. But check this out, right? Yes. <laughs> In our team lounge, right? That's what we have. During the school day, you don't want to go in the lunchroom because, you know, sometimes I don't want to be in there. Right. There's too much going on in there. Mm -hmm. She don't like me in there. 
I, I don't want. I just want to chill. If you do what you're supposed to do in that classroom, and, meet the criteria. and you meet the criteria, <laughs> that's when you need to go for lunch in the team language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our seniors, thanks to Ms. Uh, Reyes, our seniors have their own senior lounge. You know the clients, couches, they chill at TV, all that down. stuff. <laughs> all, all that stuff in the senior lounge. In the morning, our seniors, they get to go in here and drink coffee. Did you know they don't have to be here until 9 o'clock? And everybody else got to be here at 7 30. After 7 30, you late. Don't come in here through that 7 30. But yes, if you come early, you can go get you a cup of coffee, kind of get your moment together, get that sea line moment, get your chi together. We also, um, well, this room. That's exactly what we have. We have wellness rooms almost on every floor. On the wellness room, there's a social worker on hand. We have um, a case manager on hand. We have a behavioral health counselor as well as an academic counselor. Um, we have programs coming in that we have partnered with that and they come there, they do um, girl groups, boy groups, let's just talk, let's, um, all types of things that we have um, just during the school day. That's during the day. I'm not talking about after school. If you need a minute, let's say you have a problem transitioning, or maybe you like, look, I don't, they don't, they be mad in the first place. And I know if I walk through the hallway, maybe if somebody don't hear or look at me wrong, it's going to be a problem. Let's go over here and get you. We got the water fountain, we we'll get the cup, all this food water. We got something to drink, we got some, you know, ice, whatever you need. But yes, we have a lot of things in the building to make sure that whatever you need during the morning to your way home to school. We have activities. And guess what? If you have five or more people and it's something that you like to do, that can then become a club. club. That's how the dance got together. That's how bowling got together. That's how wrestling got. That's how we got um Tai Chi. We also have um weight training. Yep, weight training. Weight training. Yoga. Yoga. Yep, yoga. All of those things, not only during the day, but after school as well. Hope that answered your question. So we, yeah, yes. I mean, once, yeah. I'm sorry, excuse me. I, I was just interested in finding out because it looks like it's about third young people here and we really haven't heard from them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's important if you have some concerns, don't be afraid to speak Correct. about it um, or, or questions. Don't let your parents, and this is going to be your place if it's going to be your place. And you have, I mean, you got a wealth of folks right here that uh, should be accountable for what they say to you. So I, I think you should step in and say something that you feel so moved. Or, or be asked. I would like to know, right? Uh-oh. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, you know what I mean. No, seriously. You know, I'm glad you really brought that up because, um, you know, the whole idea is that I want you here. You, you know, I, I want you here, and I really didn't care what you felt because I knew you need, <laughs> need to be here. You, you know, because sometimes um, it, it's this exposure that opens up your mind. You, you know, you don't know what questions to ask yet until you experience something. I know that was with me, right? I always, if I was in a new environment, I'm always sitting quiet and I'm observing and I'm just trying to fill it out and figure where is my place at, right? So I didn't really expect for you to have as much to say, but I wanted to feed you. And one thing I wanted to feed you with, be obedient and be my partner. And I guarantee you, you're gonna be developed, right? I wanted you to see my heart I wanted you to see my concern. I wanted you to see that I wasn't standing alone. I just thought about this last week and look what happened. I was just talking to Mr. Raz and said, I'm very nervous, I'm scared. I didn't think anybody was gonna come. You know, they were just gonna send their representatives and you know, this and that, whatever. They wasn't gonna take it serious. Parents wasn't this and that, whatever. I don't care, it's July. And I'm a proactive type of person. And I don't want to be stuck in a situation and I, and, I, and I don't have help, but one thing about it is like I never asked for help, right? So um, what is it that you want to say? Is anything that is missing? You can raise your hand and say, like, I'm glad to be a doctor student <laughs> or whatever it be. So uh, I just wanted to let you know that I just wanted to feed you tonight. 
you, you know, um, but if you have anything to say, because I don't have a question to ask. Because my, one. yeah, so. I know, so that's what I'm, how many of the young people here are going to be Mustang?
towards violence prevention, and we assign the students' roles as mayor, city council, the police commissioner, the district attorney, um, and had a discussion, facilitate a discussion on how we would allocate those funds, what sort of programs would we allocate them to, to try to give them an idea of what is going on in the larger picture. Um, we try our very best to pick topics that will increase civic engagement and participation. Um, and so if that is, if this is a type of conversation that any young person that's in this room might be interested in, um, and I, I love the question about creating a tape, have the students creating a table, that is the whole purpose. We understand, particularly in our office, that there are decisions and policies being made that will affect all of you and not have any young people at the table. Um, and that's what this is for. We're building the table with the students in their own classrooms. We did it all throughout the pandemic. We, we thank the students at Dobbins for their patience while we were navigating Zoom. And we're looking forward to being back in the schools this upcoming year. But if there's, if this is something you might be interested in, please talk to Principal Thomas, Mr. Douglas, um, Mr. Reyes, Ms. Russell. Um, I'm happy to also say, kind of talking about how this plays out bigger picture, we have also been able to invite some of the students who have been our partners in these listening sessions to our town halls, to our hearings with city council, to share their testimonies of what's going on in their schools and their communities and why certain programs, whether that's related to public safety or gun violence, are important to the young people and how they envision that we enact our roles and responsibilities as people who are in seats of significance. Um, uh, Don Ike Jones, he goes by Ike. Um, he is recently hired in the district attorney's office as the crime prevention and intervention specialist. Um, he comes with a wealth of information and uh, just a background of being within the community. Um, one thing that we also try to do kind of, so that was like internally, something we try to do externally. Um, we're actually uh, building a series of town halls specifically for young people. We sometimes recognize that young people are not as vocal about the things that they're concerned with because of adults being in the room. Um, and so we're trying to find a way to just formulate a series around the city of town halls for young people's voices specifically to be heard um, and engage with leadership from our office. Some ways that we kind of do that is connecting with young people in the town halls, but we also canvas at night. Um, we canvas on the corners, we canvas you know, for young people who may be out night on the corners, we canvass in the local businesses, we share flyers. Don is gonna be doing much of that work with us as far as programming. And then we also host a monthly job and resource fair, which we call One Stop, which we canvass for. Um, and we canvass for the whole entire week prior to, prior to the event. It's the first Thursday of every month from three to five. And we move our job fair across the city, bringing the opportunities to you. We're not gonna ask you to come down to City Hall and have you pay a fee to just get down there via transportation. We're bringing it to your school gymnasium. We're bringing it to your local church. We're bringing it to your local synagogue, wherever that may be that is willing to open our doors to be able to bring economic and opportunities as well as uh, social services. Um, and so we're often, I, I usually interact with Mr. Douglas um, in the listening sessions, but also in just sharing information about our job fair and town halls um, as well. So that's just a little bit. Um, if you're interested in any of that, please feel free to speak to me or anyone else uh, from your school. Thanks. One, uh, just one other quick thing. Um, you know, do, are there any seniors in the audience? Any seniors? Okay, one senior back there. Um, thank you very much. Just wanted folks to know that the city of Philadelphia has invested heavily in making sure that cost um, is not an obstacle to higher education. So there is the Cato scholarship that's available at Community College of Philadelphia that allows you to attend CCP for free um, if you are qualifying. And so I, I just want, again, to emphasize, we are doing everything that we can to make sure that this city invests in its young people, invests in opportunity and possibility. And so your success here at Dobbins can be rewarded um, with you know scholarships and other types of things, uh, but we want you to know that there's a place that you can call home locally um, at CCP after you graduate, um, where you should not have to be afraid of you know extreme debt and all these impossible things. 
um, that face young people far too often at such a young age. Um, we also really, you know, just to, to again, to celebrate Ms. Patterson um, and any uh, parent who joins uh, the Home and School Association or other parent efforts, we really need a loud and vocal group of parents. You don't have to speak English. You just have to be able to talk about what it means to care for your child. We need those issues. Uh, we've been fighting really hard on city council to reorganize the city budget so it prioritizes young people. Um, we should have libraries that are open seven days a week. We do not. Um, they are only open five days a week. We worked hard to try and get uh, extended recreation center hours, especially in neighborhoods that are heavily impacted by gun violence. There are only about, there are about 14 of them. We're still working on that. Um, so your voices will make a huge amount of difference on all of that. So I just wanna put that out there that there's opportunity. Um, and most importantly, we are wishing everybody a wonderful start to a safe and joyful school year. Yeah. Thank you, Councilman. As, as we narrow down these last five minutes, uh, I really wanted to get an opportunity for Mr. Harris from Pan to uh, just say some words. Pan focuses on uh, anti-violence anti, uh, in the community with young folks, things of that nature. And this is a blessing to have him right down the street. Uh, Pan, he has sent members of his, his organization down to the school at times when uh, Dr. Daniel would reach out and just ask for some types of support whether it's verbal workshops, whether it was, you know, just lend a hand, with you, be, be present in the hallways, and it, it makes a difference. And so I just want to give you the opportunity to just uh, say a few words if you like. If not, I'm just grateful to be here. I'm excited. I love being around the Mustang. Yeah. 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 I'm excited. And, 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 and I'm very hopeful and, and believing that we're going to have a great yeah. Yes, right. But I just have one commercial. One commercial. July 31st. <laughs> July 31st. Pan is having a fantastic day right down here at 17th and Lehigh. So we want you to come out, get some refreshments, get some resources, enjoy the entertainment, uh, bring your children because we're probably going to have some uh, some giveaways too. And so please come July the 31st. 17th Lehigh. I would also like to retire. 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 From, 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 from 12 until 3. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 to 4. Okay. I would also like to uh, give Mr. I. Jones an opportunity to say a few words as we wind down. Um, Mr. Jones is one of the members of an organization called Grown with uh, Arnell Drinks, who came along. And they came around and started a program called I Used to Be You. And what, what, what was going on at the time, we had a small disruption in climate with just a few of our ninth graders. They still had the eighth grade and seventh grade kind of uh, behaviors. And so we was able to uh, connect with Mr. Jones and Mr. Drinks, who's, uh, who's actually, I think he's getting married this weekend, right? This weekend. Yeah, getting married now. And so um, when you talk about making a call, these guys was coming instantly for support and they were there. And the young folks responded to them. Uh, they, they, they came to me over the pandemic. We, we also do a, what we call Fresh Fall Wednesdays. Every Wednesday there at Dobbins, I just brought it back uh, this yesterday. At Dobbins, at 12, 30, 30 every Wednesday, we give out fresh fruits and vegetables, 10,000 pounds. And throughout the pandemic, I was fortunate enough to, to work with some of our community partners and ways of churches, and I was able to bounce around up until yesterday I came back home. Um, so we'll continue to do that, fresh fruits and vegetables, um, the same as that fruits and vegetables you find in the supermarket. And there's no ID required, no signature required. Just need to carry it in. I partner with Phil Abundance on that. But I want to give Mr. Jones an opportunity just to say some words. He's a presence here in Dobbins, and now I know that he's with uh, the district attorney's office and G. Lamar Stewart. And listen, the support is endless, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Carl. She made, you made a very, very interesting point. I was speaking on the radio. I was one of those kids that put the last time I went to the Jones Club until funding stopped. And I've been addicted to a lot of, lot of years. They have nowhere to go, nothing to do. So the important is that kids have to go. 
is tremendous. And also, we made a point again, both of the war zones sometimes in the school. So it was important for us to map out that route they take to get here, to make sure that they're safe. They have safe travels getting here. Uh, I work with Ann, with Mr. Mike, with one of my mentors. I work in the community every day, boots on the ground, you know, talking to kids, in the program. Right now, we got 300 kids working with Boston City. We take them skating, we take them uh, everywhere. Museums, trying to get visitor experiences, you know. My job now with the POA, you know, I'm doing some of the similar work, you know, boots to the ground. We leave, just call the office, we teach you more story. You know, we'll be there. You know, it's almost important to me, you know, we raise our kids properly. So they know where you get up at. You know, they're saying everybody should push you around is it takes a village. The second part is so the kids come back and raise the village. Right. And the second part is they're saying. So it's important that we raise our kids properly, they can come back and raise us. That's right. This is a cycle. So one day you're raising your mother, take care of your mother, take care of The cycle that goes on. So you know what's happening here is great. Yeah. I, I want to go to Dallas. I want to be a kid. You know, we got the men, you know, we got the men, 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 Last but not least, we have to close out. I would like to hear some words from the sergeant. And we'll close it out with uh, Council President Dish, uh, Clark office. And then for the sake of everyone's time, it's just about two minutes after seven. And then we can dismiss. And um, then we'll be able to get home to see. Sorry. Just uh, thanks for the time. I mean, the only thing I, that I wanted to just pick you back up on was uh, the fact that um, the question earlier about community based policing and everything like that, old school policing. Um, through my experience, uh, um, let's say I've been over 10 years, I was on bicycle patrol down in South Division and uh, assisted in, in school dismissals and to help reduce violence and stuff like that. And the fact that when it's the same officers, I believe, uh, at the same location, seeing the kids and everything, getting to learn them a little bit, little learning their hobbies, learning their uh, after school programs and everything like that. That I truly believe in the young adults and kids that they build some form of trust in it all. I think fits into the uh, the theme here of building a relationship, and um, I feel so that, that it's very positive to the fact that it's the same officers going to be assigned to this location. You know, so. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. President, Daryl Clark, officer. Yes. So I won't be long. I'm going to thank you all for coming out tonight. I mean, it just shows your commitment and uh, how much you really care about Dallas and how much you need to be integrated with Dallas. Um, so when I came in, I'm going to say one thing about prison, right? When I came in, I seen first person, who was third person I saw, I had some other strong community leaders up here. Uh, with Billy Thompson. Oh, yeah. And I said, well, what is Billy doing here? Billy Strawberry Mansion, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, hold on. Then when she said it, I said, oh, gosh. Put two and two together, that, that's, that's her father. So <laughs> what I'm going to say is, look, the fact that you come from, y'all got a heck of a principal. It's called Good Stop. And, 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 uh, <laughs> Billy, you know, deeply committed to the community of Strawberry Mansion. Uh, look, Bill. I got no choice but to help you out. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, See what parents do. <laughs> so, but what I do want to say from, from the council president's office is, uh, you know, that you definitely want to work with Principal Thompson and Charles to, you know, be engaged with the community even more. Just hearing about all the things that Dallas have going on here. I mean, if you need to share that information with the community, share that information. It's, it's huge that we do information dissemination with everyone. Um, so we're going to make sure that the folks outside of the building are coming into the building and being engaged with the students as well. So it won't seem like that, you know, it's, it's us and them. Yes. We're going to have some uh, inclusiveness. Yes. So I want to thank you all and definitely look forward to working with you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank thank you. you. Thank you. So, so, so here we are um, at the end. I want to say last but not least, well, second last but not least, um, I want to just recognize Officer Turner, Bernard yeah. Turner, oh, yeah. class of 83. Class of 83. As, you, as, as you walk out the building, you can see he's among, uh, among Miss Connie, uh, among uh, the uh, uh, Dallas Walk of Fame, Hall of Fame. Oh, and when you talk about committed Mustangs, but to be able to have an officer that shows up without a shadow of doubt, 
Sometimes I just want to like, oh, what are Bernie doing here? He said, I'm just stopping past, making sure everything's okay. That's right. You know? <laughs> and that's what, when you're talking about a community-based partnership, that's what it's about. And it just makes it just sweeter to know that we have Mustangs in uh, uh, the, the district that we actually set the city. There's Mustangs doing great things throughout the city. There's alumni from Overbrook. There's alumni from Story Mansion, from Grass, so on and so forth. But there's nothing. There is nothing like a Dobbins Mustang. We show up, we show out, we exit to learn, and we exit to serve. I want to say thank you. Before we end, I want to just recognize the director of the Mayor's Office of Youth Engagement. She's, she's come on in here. Uh, Jeanette, I, I don't want to mess with that. It was always, it's Stratus Housey, Bob and so she's always here. And when you talk about, and young folks, I want you to hear this. You are part of one of Mary Kenny's community schools. Yeah. So this here is not out the ordinary. At any time, parents, you can walk in here, or your, your young person could come home and say, oh, Mary Kenny was at the, at the, at the school. Oh, uh, President Clark office was at the school. Things like that. So this is a norm. So welcome to the family. It's a holistic approach. So on behalf of our current principal and new principal, Dobbs Alumni Class 1996, Mr. Vaughn Thompson, I'd like to say thank you all for coming out. Thank you for sharing your time and your busy schedule. Thank you, parents, scholars. We welcome you. We look forward to embracing you. And August the 31st will be a day, a new day, here at Dobbs. Thank you. Enjoy <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>